this praxis and you can really start to see off to your left over here the shape of the house form being put in here. You can see this big trench in the front that's uh, for what the, is called the frost wall uh, where you're building in a place where there is freezing temperatures. Uh, you need to have the foundation go down below the ground to below the level where you usually or you know tend to get any freezing and that's uh, to prevent you know buckling and the you know frost pushing up creating frost heaves in your wall cracking your foundation wall so we've got that here and it goes to the back there we don't need a frost wall in the back because the whole back of the house is going to be uh, bermed in from the back so we won't be getting those freezing temperatures but overall it's just really nice to see this all starting to come together you can kind of see the way that it's laying into the landscape as you can see there are some shadows laying across here uh, and uh, those shadows are from trees right back here, which I'll eventually want to nip down because the idea is to get sun into the house, to help warm it up and everything like that during these colder uh, times of the year. So it gives me a good sense of which trees I'm going to need to be pulling down to, uh, to make sure that I keep getting sun in there. Uh, my wonderful contractor is over here just finishing off the last of the, uh, the ledge we have over there. We're trying to clear out as much as we can before we put the, uh, the wall over there. Uh, but overall, things are going really well. The next step here is to put crushed stone down on the bottom here, and then we're going to put in what's called the footing forms. Uh, the footing forms are the concrete forms uh, for pouring the footing, and the footing is a really large mass of concrete that is at the bottom of your foundation wall. It's kind of the foundation of your foundation. And uh, uh, th th that's going to get laid in right on top of the crushed stone. I checked with the building inspector because on the building permit form, it just has a sign-off spot for foundation but I wanted to you know just check with them it's like well do you just check the foundation like when it's done or like how does that work and the building inspector told me well no what we do is we want to check uh, I, I want to come by your site and check before they pour the foundation so they want to check once the forms for the footing are put up they want to check the forms for the footing and then once they approve that then they can put up the forms for the foundation itself and then he said he wants to come and check the, the forms for the foundation before they pour the foundation uh, and then he wants to check it, you know, once before everything gets backfilled after the foundation is poured. So that's three inspections instead of what appeared like it was one on the form. So I'm glad I checked, and that really illustrates the importance of just keeping a constant um, a communication with your building inspector. You know, a lot of people see the building inspector as the enemy, and I, I understand why that is. It, it is kind of a pain in the ass sometimes when you have to, you know, uh, you know, meet all these requirements, get all these inspections and everything. But you know, as irritating as they are, there is a purpose of them and getting a couple extra eyes on something to possibly avoid uh, some kind of a mistake or an oversight or something like that, I see it as a good thing. Obviously, it slows things down and especially given the current situation, you know, I'd like to speed things up. But, you know, as long as you understand that that's good, what it's going to be like and, and stay in communication with them so that, you know, they're a part of the process, you see them as an asset and they feel like you see them as an asset things always work out better that way. So I reached out to them, you know, found out like what's the best way to communicate with you, like, you know, what kind of notice do you want and everything, you know, see them as a partner in the process and then they'll generally act like a partner in the process. I know there's some a-holes out there, but you know, most people at least want to be good people, want to be nice people and you know, don't want to be an a-hole. I know there's some of those out there, but by and large, my experience, building inspectors have generally been helpful people that, you know, with helped me through the process and have not hindered me. So we're getting really close. We're gonna get our first inspection once we get our forms in here. I think within a few days, we should really start to see some walls forming here. That's it, thanks for watching.